Okay, so welcome to lecture number seven. And today I will try something new. The slides which are presented here uh, will outline the main ideas, while deeper details can be found in the supplemental part video, which will consist of recorded writing of tablets notes. Okay, so let's start. Um, we are still in chapter two, which is about generating standard normal random numbers. And in the last lecture, we had three methods. The first one was the ITM method, or the approximate ITM method, which is based on the approximate inversion of the cumulative distribution function of a standard normal random variable. Then we had Box-Muller method, uh, the Box-Muller method. So this, the Box-Muller method generates samples of the standard um, normal distribution through sampling of uniformly on 0, 1 distributed random variables and transformations including sine, cosine, the logarithm, and the square root. And Masalia's polar method is an alternative to the box muller method. Here we start from <coughs> random variables which are uniformly distributed on the unit circle. Um, today I would like to speak about the cigarette method. So the cigarette method goes back to Masalia and Tsang, to 2000 or even a bit earlier. And it's now the default generator in MATLAB. And the cigarette method is an R exception rejection method with high acceptance probability and only few operations, function evaluations, etc. So it's a highly efficient method. Before, but before we can speak about the cigarette method, we need a small preparation. Namely, we need to speak about um, conditional distributions. Okay, so the tool we need as a preparation is a so-called tool of a conditional distribution. It's in fact a probability measure which arises from another probability by imposing a restriction. So here x and y are random variables where x is rd valid and y is rm valid. So x takes values in rd and y takes values in rm. And a, while the set a is for our restriction, so a is a Borel measurable set in rd, and we are assuming that the probability that x takes values in a is not equal to zero. Otherwise, the whole stuff gets really difficult. And well, also we, for our for our use, there is no uh, purpose in condition conditioning on a zero set. Okay. Well, this is our x and a is our condition, and now we are looking at the probabilities that y takes values in b under the condition x and a. These are classical conditional probabilities, and b runs through all the Borel measurable sets in Rm. And by doing this, well, we get a new uh, probability measure, and this new probability measure is called conditional distribution of y under the condition x and a. And for short, we always use this abbreviation here, so p of y under the condition x and a. So having this preparation, we can start with a cigarette method. And the cigarette method will consist of several steps, um, more precisely five. And the first one is to exploit uh, symmetry. So the first thing what we can do, what we are doing is, well, set is a standard normal random variable. And we can express set and distribution by this product of random variables. So y is a random variable here, and y has this Lebesgue density. And if you look a bit more precisely on this Lebesgue density, you can see it's the Lebesgue density of the absolute value of z. So we restrict here to zero infinity. And here, in fact, we have uh, twice the normalization constant of the standard normal uh, density. So y has the same law as the, as the um, absolute value of z. And what is the other part doing here? 2u minus 1. So u takes value 0 with probability 1 half and also um, value 1 uh, with probability 1 half. So 0 with probability 1 half, 1 with probability 1 half. And then 2u minus 1 is plus 1 with probability um, one half and minus one with probability one half. So two u minus one is in fact the sign of z. So what we're doing here, we are decomposing z in its absolute value and its sign. 
and if we sample the absolute value and the sign independently, while in distribution we have the same law as the original standard normal random variable. And what will be very useful for later on is the pseudo density of y. Um, why is it useful? Well, in certain steps we will use acceptance rejection sampling, and for this you don't need to care about the constant. Well, the pseudo density or once pseudo density, a pseudo density is not uniquely defined, you get by dropping the square root of 2 over pi. So the next step is to cut off the tail um, to improve the efficiency of the sampling method. And while well, r greater than zero is the cutoff parameter. And while well, what we are doing, so y, y is in distribution the same as the absolute value of z. We decompose y in this way. So it's v times xp plus 1 minus v times xt. And v, xp, and xt are all independent. And then, of course, we need to prescribe the distributions of v, xp, and xt. So let's start at the bottom. The distribution of xp, xp, is a conditional distribution, xt also. And while here we condition y on taking values less than r, and here we are conditioning y on taking values greater or equal than r. So well, that's the tail variable, and that's the base variable. And with v, we decide whether we sample from uh, the tail. So if v is equal to 0, we sample from the tail. And if v is equal to 1, we sample from the base. And, and for everything to work, uh, v needs to, need, um, needs to have the right probabilities. So the probability is that v is equal to 0, which is we are sampling from the tail, um, is the probability that y takes values greater or equal than r, and vice versa, so the probability of v equal to 1 is the probability of y taking values less than r. Okay, that's the decomposition um, of y. And for the following, uh, we need the fact that, that xb and xt have, have these pseudo-densities here. And intuitively, um, well, these pseudo-densities for these conditional distributions well, are obvious. So xp is a base variable, so we are conditioning on values between 0 and r, and t is the tail variables, so we are conditioning on the values between r and infinity. So what's going on? If you compare with the previous pseudo-density, here we have the condition that we are between uh, 0 and infinity, and conditioning leads just to uh, the modification here of the indicator function according to the ranges on which we conditioning we, on which we are conditioning on. And while well, in the supplemental parts there will be more details details on this how this is actually derived. Okay, so step number three. So step number three is to actually build a cigarette. Uh, what's a cigarette? So Masalia and Sang didn't choose his name by coincidence. So a cigarette is a terraced compound of successively receding stories or level in, levels in ancient Mesopotamia. So it's one of the classical temple buildings. And building the cigarette in our context means, so we cover the pseudo-density F with rectangles R1 up to Rn minus 1 and the basis strip Rn. And such in a way that all the sets R1 up to Rn have the same area new. Okay, so this um, this procedure here leads to the following system of nonlinear equations. So x0 up to xn minus 1, these are the corner of the rectangles, x0 is 0, xn minus 1 equals r. And well, we have the condition that r1 up to rn minus 1 and rn are supposed to have all the same area new. So the area of the base strip is given by this expression. It's r times f of r, that's the rectangular part, and here for the integral, uh, the integral is actually the tail part. So r integral from r to infinity f of x dx. The other rectangles, we get the area in this way. So it's xi times the difference of xi minus 1 minus f of xi. And this should be equal to nu for 
i ranging from 1 to n minus 1 as, as the area of the, of the base strip. So this uh, system of nonlinear equations will um, become clear in the picture. So, okay, so the whole thing becomes of course clear with the picture. So the red curve is f of x. And here we have the rectangles r1 up to r7 and r8, the green stuff, is the base strip. And all the rectangles and r8 are supposed to have the same area. So let's recall the area of the base strip. That's r times f of r. So this is the area of this rectangular part of the base strip. Uh, plus the integral from r going to infinity f of x dx. That's the area of the remaining part here. And for the area of the rectangles, um, let's pick for example r3. That's i equal to 3. So what's the height? The height is f of x2 minus f of x3. This is this. And the length is xi, which is x3. And we need to multiply everything. And this we have here in this example from 1 to 7. For these 7 rectangles, this is supposed to be equal to nu as the area of the base strip.